Hey everybody, welcome back. We're uh, designing Pyrrha's weapon, uh, or Penny's weapon again, and we're gonna go in and get these finer details in. We're gonna dig into it and really get into the design, and uh, hopefully we can get most of this design work done today in this episode. So thanks for coming back. Hopefully you liked the first episode, we're gonna keep doing just the same. Uh, we did get a uh, replacement mouse. Uh, we stole the laser cutter mouse our laser cutter computer's mouse, so now I have the ability to orbit without it being extremely annoying. Uh, one of these days I'm going to get one of them fancy dancy uh, 3D orbit mice, but those bad boys are like 100 bucks, 150 bucks, and well, it's not in the budget. Alright, so we've separated these into three different bodies, we'll work on them independently, so let's start with the little cross guard piece here, we're now we're going to create a component. And this is where I really need to work on some of my workflow issues. I don't necessarily know if uh, what should and shouldn't be componentized and when to do it. I don't know. It gets, it's one of those workflow issues I just haven't worked out the best way. Because what this is going to do is trap everything we do inside its little component window here. So, for instance, I'm going to make this component inactive and then sketch. I want to sketch on this plane, and now that sketch is inside this component. Everything we do on this component will be inside that category. So a lot of my designs, by the time I get to the end, I think Milo had 147 bodies or something stupid, and I don't even know how many sketches. It was quite annoying. But uh, so <clears throat> SketchUp. Or not SketchUp. That's a terrible program that we used to use. Uh, Fusion here. Uh, when we created the sketch, automatically projected this circle. We're going to go ahead and keep that. Um, I did run into an issue with the Pyro weapon that uh, we might cover if it comes up. It won't come up on this weapon, but uh, I had to work around to fix that. Now, let's see if we've got a better shot inside of our repertoire of screen grabs here and what we're looking for is this one maybe yeah okay so now we have a decision to make a couple decisions it could be argued <laughs> that this concaves in and that's interesting uh it's actually not something i've seen before it does make the weapon look cooler but i'm not entirely sure so this could be a small rounded dome and it curves in. So this is where we've got to make a decision. And I think looking at it, yeah. Okay. So from this image, you could see where that looks like a lip and it, I, I'm really going to go ahead and call it as going down in. Um, all right. Now we've got a three prong thing here. So what we're going to do is and this is where we got to start thinking about how it's going to be 3d printed how it's going to be manufactured you want to kind of keep that in your head uh while you're designing so that we can cut this up correctly and so we could make this whole piece an insert i think that's what we're going to do and that way a it could be painted and then plucked in there and um this outside is changing its refraction so these aren't lights, they're, it's, it, this piece is shiny, so to speak. So what we're going to do is sketch a little bit here. This is going to create a projection, but that's fine. This should be dead center in the middle of the circle. I don't know why it's not giving me the center of the circle, but whatever. Um... Actually, let's just let's do this. All right, now we've got a center line. Let's do all right. Oh, what's it doing? Why is it why is it acting like that? Anyway, let's come down here. So. Let's go with five millimeters. And this is one of the other things that I'm fairly certain there's probably a better way to do it, but this is just the way I do it. Oh, how do we want to do this? 
do they look uniform? They do, they, they look like little squares. So if we're gonna make it five millimeters deep, we gotta make it five millimeters wide. So that'd be 2.5 millimeters and 2.5 millimeters. Nope, not 20.5, 2.5. All right, what I'm gonna do here is something a little different. I'm just gonna create these two lines. I'm gonna try something. I don't really do it this way, but it might be better. So we're gonna use the extend tool. Uh, boom, boom, that works great. Normally what I would have done is drawn this to that line and that's not necessarily, this puts that on that line so it's perfect. Uh, now I'm gonna select this line and hit X. X turns that into a construction line. So now when I go over this face, I'm not getting one or the other square, I'm getting the full square. So we're gonna go into a sketch and because this is a repeat pattern, we're going to create a circular pattern. We want the sketch objects. So it's all of this jazz. The center point is gonna be the center point of the drawing. Oh, come on. Why is it not giving me? There is no point there. Okay. Let's just draw a circle here. That's gonna force, I think it projected this line, but did not project it as, project it as a circle. So I think that's been the issue. So now, as you see, we got this point, which is our center point. So go back to the circle thing. I need to, yeah, those need to be docked different. All right. Now it wants to select the objects again, this guy, that guy, that guy, and that guy. And we have our center point. Now it's gonna try and do it all three. It's gonna try and do it in a circle. And actually looking at this, uh, we'll do it. We can edit it here in a minute. Um, there's two ways to do this. We can tell it to do an angle. And as you see here, it's exactly what we need. It's 180 degrees stretched over that. However, it's backwards. <laughs> so let's try that. Did that fix it? It fixed it. All right. So we just put a little negative in there. Let's flip that over. Now, I think we have an issue. And I think this is too small. And that is concerning. Well, let's look back at our reference, actually. We have a canvas in here. So let's pull the canvas up. And now, because we've got more than just little tiny sketch lines. Oh, stop. Edit the sketch. We're going to increase our opacity so we can kind of see what's going on. And I still can't really see. But you know why it is. Let's switch to the bottom. That didn't help either. Let's turn the body off. Maybe that's what's kind of glitching my brain here. It's just really hard to see this and don't know why. This should be brighter. Let's switch back to this component okay here we go that it was graying it all out uh, it also has showed a glaring problem we enlarged that so it's probably not an issue um so as you can see uh, you know what that doesn't look terrible it looks pretty spot on for what we're doing all right, we'll keep it. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da. Turn the body back on. Move back to this component. What it's done is it's grayed out everything. So uh, that's why this is opaque because everything that is not the active component is grayed out at this time because it's not the active component. So actually, you know what? We're gonna edit this sketch. So. I am going to bump these. And this is another, this section is a good, a good reason for what I did earlier, which is the extrude or the um, extend. That's not the right number I wanted. I want three. So because I did an extend,
extend operation here instead of trying to draw it on that circle and then I'd have to fix it later. This is part of the workflow that I'm trying to get into to where you do the best practice and best practice I think in that situation was to extend that line because now I just these pieces they just automatically they re-extend and now that's all we've done and that auto because it's it's all done throughout the entire piece it auto adjusted so everything got done all right so we're gonna stop that sketch now we're gonna do something different um actually i do want to go back into that sketch because i want to do one more little piece i want to trim out oh what's it doing it did not like what i just did okay here we go uh, I'm removing some constraint and it's getting cranky with me, but uh, that's fine. It probably has something to do with the projection underneath it. Okay, now this is all one line, actually. You know, keep messing up. Make that a construction line, too. Now this is all one giant face, or it should be. Let's take that projection out. Okay, now it's one giant face, done. All right, uh, now we're gonna take and do, uh, the reason I wanted to make that all happy was because this next operation is going to be complicated if it's a bunch of different pieces. Because we're gonna select this body, or select the splitting tool, and I need this all to be one line. So we're gonna split that, and hit okay. And what that's done is created probably a bunch of new bodies. Or at least two. That's going to be problematic. We'll look at that later. So we turn that off. Now we have this cone. Now we can work inside there. And in fact, we're going to go ahead. And this is another. Oh, hang on. Okay. I forgot. Because we're changing into different components where you're creating a new timeline. So we got to come back here. And this was the combine operation. I think, yes. So we combined this earlier as an example in the last episode. I'm going to remove that feature, which then when we go back into our component here, boop, come on, here we go. As you can see, that has changed everything so that we don't have that hole. And that's gonna be better for now. We'll worry about the rest of it later. Uh, so combining those at this time was wrong. Now, I need to make this concave, and that's that's curious. I don't actually know how to do that offhand. Um, no, I do. I do. Uh, let's start by cutting this guy in half. So we're going to do a mid-plane between here. Oh, come on, Mousy. And there. So what that has done is created a mid-plane. Then we're going to take and modify, split the body. Boom, boom, boom. Now we have two bodies. We actually have four, but we're not gonna talk about that. Um, <laughs> so we wanna get rid of this one. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove it because it's just gonna be a pain in the butt to keep it around. We've also got a construction plane. As you can see, created a new entry for construction plane inside this component. So it's not cluttering up the main feed and having 40 construction planes. So now, what I want to do, and all right, I need to create a new sketch. And this is why we wanted it earlier on this plane. And I don't know if we ended up succeeding on getting it exactly on the plane, and we did. So what I'm gonna do instead of that, is create a new construction plane. Stop. A uh, new midpoint between here and here. Then I'm going to use this as a sketch or as a point to create a sketch. And now we can create that shape that we saw on the inside. And again, this is where things get interesting. How do I want to do this? Um, let's start by creating an arc. 
three point arc from here to there. We don't want to go too deep. But if we do this, then uh, I just hit P to get projection. I'm going to project this line in. I'm going to use it here in a second. I want to sketch mirror this object along this plane go now that's not a perfect I think the better way to do this would be to draw a circle I'm not sure it's gonna work for our purposes because we're gonna put another another uh, sort of arc on top of that so see I'm looking at about 40 millimeters all the way across and if we look at our screenshot, this is, uh, actually, we have a scale tool. Let's, oh, gee golly. Let's just fudge it in here. A 30, 30 millimeters across to be about 15 through the center. I don't know if I like that. Let's go to a straight 20. No. Yes, I'm gonna do 20 because it's gonna auto do a thing. Uh, we won't need to do that, actually. I need to maybe draw that line correctly. And that'll be at an angle of 180, and it would be 20 inches, 20 millimeters long. Now we're going to go up, and we want it almost all the way to the surface, but we still want it recessed. So up to the surface is five. So let's go. 4.5 up, that'll give us a good point there. Now we create a new arc, and because I used SketchUp for so many years, it took me months to stop hitting A there because A is gonna cause an entire process. It's gonna open the um, appearance menu. Oh, it's terrible. It'll just hurt your brain. Well, it hurts my brain. I don't know if it'll hurt your brain. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna try and get this angle right. There may be a better way to do this. I kind of like that. Now we can trim this, trim this, create a mirror of this over here. Okay, now we're gonna project this line here. Why did it not project all of those lines? Oh, by golly. Why, you gotta be annoying. Okay. Now, because this is a cutting operation, this is gonna be a little weird. Um, I'm gonna modify, no, I'm gonna create, it's called a revolve. The profile is gonna be this one. I actually didn't have to re even create that. The axis is going to be basically this point right here. And see how that's a cut operation? All right, if my mouse would cooperate. I don't know why that's red. I also don't know why we've suddenly come out of component. But we'll go ahead and execute that, but I might change it. And I think I am going to change it because it does not quite look perfect. So let's go back to our sketch. In fact, we're just gonna click here to edit our sketch. I like this this was fine i did not like this distance but i deleted everything so let's change let's do this we're just gonna back up through life and all of that now we have this and i wanna hmm Let's try full 30. And we gotta remove this line. That's probably a good reason why I went all the way back, because modifying that dimension is just gonna be a pain in the butt. Maybe tangent arc's what I want here. I don't know. All right, so there. And now we're gonna project this line and this line. That'll create our profile. 
Okay. Now we're going to go back into our revolve tool. This profile we are revolving. This is the axis by which it is revolved around. Come on. All right. Give me an axis. Oh, that's fine. Boom. Okay. So cut operation. Boom. All right. So let's look at this. Now, let's get rid of that so we can see it better. Unfortunately, we did pick up this line. So we may change the way that that was done to get rid of that. Or I could just hit delete. See if it goes away. It didn't. Um... I think that looks right. Let's turn our other body on and look at the whole thing. So I think that's the detail work. That That's what we want. Uh, there is a small change I need to make. So we're going to go back into this sketch. And instead of this line and this line, I'm going to try to do this. And this is probably not best practice either, but we'll see what happens. Okay, got rid of that weird line. Um, sometimes it's just a small variation. I don't understand why it does that sometimes. Uh, maybe doing the projection was bad. Maybe that has a slight slope to it. It shouldn't, but I don't know. Regardless, we have our part now. And I think that is good to go. And what we'll do is keep this as an individual part. So we're not going to combine them. We're going to go to... Oh, gee golly, where am I looking? I need to mirror this. Nope, I want to mirror the body. And the plane will be the bottom here, boom. It's gonna create another entity, but we're not gonna, I don't think we're gonna do anything more to this because that's gonna be what you would call, Let's see, what are these? Are these in, which body is that? That's odd. Why is that data in there and not in here? All right, so we're not gonna do that for now because I don't know what that is, but, so essentially, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit A, that's gonna pull up our appearance tab. And this is just for my sanity. I don't like this clear stuff. It drives me bonkers. So what we're just going to do is drop some color into here. Let's look at a glossy black paint for the center. Okay. Um, that will help with my sanity. So. As you can see, we'll be able to insert these pieces. Now, later when we 3D print it or go to 3D print it, we're gonna change some stuff here. There needs to be some extra bits in here. So we'll have to make a decision at that point whether or not we want to print this as one piece and then let them paint it. I'm not entirely sure I wanna do that, but we'll call this piece uh, effectively done. Uh, we could inlay this. You know what, let's go ahead and do it. Um, good question. I don't know. Do I have a construction plane on the top of that yet? I do. All right, we're gonna use this to give me a top-down view. We're gonna create a circle and we're gonna draw that little detail in. So let's go with 30. Now we're going to offset that circle by just a bit. Probably a full millimeter will work. All right. How does this work? It's like a Apple power on button. Um, yeah, so it is a straight circle. So, or, um, it's a rectangle. It 
is kind of from the center out. So, yeah. Right, let's get the rectangle tool. I don't want that rectangle tool though. I want a three point rectangle tool, I think. How big do we want this? Actually, let's go ahead and do two. Nope, dang it. All right. I'm just gonna do it the way I always do it, which is wrong. I know it's wrong. There's a better way to do this. All right, now we're just gonna connect these two points. Boom, that creates that. Now that's not what we're gonna use, but we're gonna do this and we're gonna shrink it in. Uh, let's shrink it in a millimeter. So then we can trim and use this outer bounding box to trim these guys so they get out of the way. Trim all of this garbage on the inside, trim the center line don't need it anymore and then we're going to select the rest of this box and get rid of it boom gone now this is where things get tricky I don't know how I feel about the whole um, doing these etches inside these like this I actually do not like that let's go because that distance is roughly one. So what did this end up being? If that was two, that was four. So that's one and a half. Um, should they be the same dimension is the question. You know what, that's fine. It looks fine being nitpicky because that's what I do. All right, now this is where it's gonna get complicated. Actually, no, this is wrong. This is not how you do it. Cause normally I try to extrude this, but that's gonna extrude poorly. That's, it's gonna extrude unevenly and we don't want it uneven. We want the dome shape to be recessed. So what we're gonna do is split the body, select this body, select the tool, which is gonna be this bad boy. Okay. Then my sketch goes away, which is kind of annoying. So we'll bring it back. We will repeat split body this guy and select this is our tool. Boom. Now we're going to go to modify scale, select this and this body. Then we're going to non uniformly scale and then we're going to take this and pull it down. Um, hmm, how far do we want to go here? Doot. Oh, come on, where are we at? Actually, don't even think that's gonna help me. Oh, let's see. Let's go 0 0.9 just to start, and then we'll look at it. So that's kind of deep, maybe too deep. Turn that sketch back off. I don't know why it looks so weird. Why did it? Again, we're into the heck did SketchUp or what the heck did Fusion do? Territory. So, all right, whatever. What we're gonna do is come down here. This should be a flat plane. Extrude this. Okay, that's what we did. Let's look at the bottom. All right, we did something bad. Go back to the scale operation. We don't want the X distance, we want the Z distance. Nope, evidently we want the Y distance. I don't know where it pulls these arc, these arc references. It could have been an error in my original. 
non-uniform. What's the point? I want the point to be like right here. You know what? It doesn't matter. As long as it's on the bottom. Okay, there we go. Fancy dancy. All right. So now we can take this and go combine this with this tool body and this tool body. We don't want to cut operation. We want to join operation and we don't want to keep the tools. So that's going to get rid of those bodies and it's going to reunify them and then boom. Uh, that's going to be some distance. Some 3D printers are better with it than others. This is a dome shape. It's going to be annoying to print anyway. I don't know, but we'll worry about that later. So that's this piece done. Um, we'll go ahead and go into here. And we have a glossy green. So let's finish jazzing it up just to be purdy like. Okay. And that, I believe, is that. So that's our pommel cross guard piece. So as you can see, a lot of these things take quite a bit of time. So we're going to go ahead and hopefully be able to finish this up in the next episode. But we're going to go ahead and cut it here. This is getting them pretty long, but uh, that's the cross guard piece done. We're good to go. I uh, hope that was informative. Um, I'm still kind of learning the software myself, but uh, it's really at a point now where for me it's best practices, how not to mess your program up the best way. Um, so hopefully this has been informative to people. Hopefully everybody had fun. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, what are the things you'd like us to cover? Um, what other frustrating lines can magically appear in our parts? But uh, anyway. <laughs> so uh, I'm Jonathan from Corsac Props. Thanks for stopping by. And hopefully you can check back again for the next episode where we try to go ahead and finish up this bad boy and show off the... Uh, finished part and then get ready to cut it for 3d thank you